Hey everybody, Roxbox90 here with my analysis and discussion of the Magic the Gathering Reserve List. And in this video we're going to focus on what is the Reserve List and its background, uh, what is it made of, what's the, I guess, methodology behind it, and then my perspective on the abolishment or not of the reprint uh, Reserve List. So for those who aren't aware, this is the Reserve List. I'll link this article down below. This is pretty much the ruling of how Wizards chose the cards in the Reserve List and what they are and why they're still there. And the real goal for Wizards was to create a list of about 572 cards that will never ever be printed ever again in any Magic the Gathering set in a functionally uh, similar way in a tournament legal format. And this is important because they have reprinted certain reserve list cards in the past and that doesn't necessarily justify reprinting or abolishing the reserve list in the future it's just for wizards they've created judge promos like guys cradle and the like which are technically on the reserve list but they're not uh, to my knowledge they're not legal tournament wise and if they are well in that case i don't know how, what was going on there but they shouldn't be considered legal the list itself is from, uh, I guess, how the reserve list came about, was back in the day, 4th edition and Chronicles were printed, and they reprinted the a bulk of the big staples, important cards from the original three to four sets of magic, prior four sets of magic, and this led to massive inflation. Way too many cards were printed. I think it was five, like 500 million versus 35 million as a print run. And it completely swamped the market cards that were twenty to thirty dollars. Suddenly became three to five dollars. And what you've seen now with things like the Fetchland reprints happened way more powerfully with some of the best cards in Magic at the time. This caused people to freak out. Players, collectors, everybody, and Wizards made this list. And the original goal was that the list was going to have all the rares, and then they were all the rares from the past sets, and then they were going to have every new set they would select new cards to put on the list but thankfully that didn't actually play out and now we just have uh, what the final list that we have and they're no longer adding cards to this list which is good uh, in terms of how the reserve list is broken out and why wizards would create such a thing pretty m or how they've created such a thing wizards decided that how are they going to choose the cards in this list i mean from me, from my perspective of how they did it, it pretty much falls into three categories. Uh, on the one hand, you have cards like the Power Nine, cards which are absolutely mind-bogglingly broken, should never be reprinted because they would automatically warp everything around them. They're absolutely broken cards, no questions asked. And there are other cards on the list as well, like Bazaar of Baghdad, which uh, Bazaar of Baghdad and, I don't know, you could probably go through the list and find them, uh, Mistress Workshop, ridiculously broken broken cards that you can never reprint in any format and not completely warp the entire game around them. Uh, and it makes perfect sense they would be on the list because Wizards is trying to prevent these absolutely broken cards from being printed again, and that's why they had similar kind of cards printed that were just much weaker in order to... the effects were cool, but they didn't want to reprint these specific ones. Got it. The second part of the list, I think, are cards that the Wizards is trying to uh, prevent from ever being in Magic again, mechanics that are not any more relevant, such as cards like Nether Void, Enchant World is no longer relevant, uh, cards which are set specific, cards that it, you have to be playing with antiqui antiquities for the cards to do anything like Golgothian uh, Silex, other cards as well which are using effects like Anti, I actually didn't pull up an example of that, but Shirazarad is an example of that, and Anti is no longer relevant to Magic. So these two categories, uh, basically mechanics or elements that Wizards doesn't want to bring into the game ever again, and cards that are too powerful for Wizards to ever reprint or bring back again, that fills up about 10% of the list. And the rest of the list is pretty much a bunch of what we would probably consider janky stuff that they could reprint and no one would notice uh, for the most part. Yeah, sure, things like Gauntlet of Might are fantastic, very powerful cards, could definitely uh, you quote-unquote use a reprint for certain formats and such, but by no means are are they uh, are they Black Lotus or any of the other Power 9 or any of the most powerful cards in this list. 
And this makes it interesting because the bulk of this cards could very well be reprinted. This really begs the question, why did Wizards choose cards like, I don't know, a Raging River or something, um, and or Sedge Troll? Why are these cards on the list when they themselves are obviously not broken, could easily be reprinted? In fact, they probably shouldn't be reprinted simply because they're so awful. But the way I see it, is that it falls under uh, it falls under the element of, and this is just my own take on this. The reason that Wizards has these cards and hasn't taken them off the, the reserve list, besides for keeping the reserve list as an entity over the years, but also because there are people who do collect these cards and they have a value because of how rare they are. It's much the same as anyone who collects a rare edition of of any specific card, people who find, you know, really rare old judge promos or people who collect things that maybe aren't very playable, but people want to collect them. And that's kind of what emphasizes what Magic, uh, about half of what Magic is. It's not just a playable game. It is a collectible card game. It's a trading card game, a collectible game. And for that, you kind of have to have a value in collection. So I can see why Wizards wouldn't simply edit the list to make people happy. Some people have spent a lot of time collecting very not very good cards that they have particular nostalgia for they like. So for me, I get that part of the side of the discussion, why they shouldn't get rid of the reserve list. There are cards that people have invested in their collection and their time, and they simply wanted to collect the cards, and so they should be able to have a value gain from that collection. I get that part of it. So there's two elements I just want to wrap up with. One is the fact that in terms of my perspective, I'm getting rid of the reserve list. I think it falls into two things. One is the group who say we should abolish it. Why? Because we should make these cards widely available and so on and so forth. So my question to you, the people who say that perspective, where would you reprint the broken cards? And the anti-cards and the like, there's no one's going to want them to be reprinted. They're never going to be reprinted. But the bigger question is, where would they print the broken cards in the list that people desperately say should have reprints? Where could they possibly print them? Could they print them in a From the Vault set? A From the Vault Power 9? Could you imagine how much expensive that would cost? And the thing is, it's not like... I mean, I'm sure Wizards would make it incredibly expensive, but stores would have to raise the price even higher on these because of the limited print run. So no matter what, there's not like you're suddenly going to have a massive Black Lotuses in the market. Not from from the vault, at least. How about a Commander's Arsenal? Oh, those had even smaller reprint uh, print run than the from the vaults. So my question to that side of the argument is, where could they possibly reprint the cards? Besides for the ones that no one really wants, besides for collectors, where could they reprint? Yeah, sure, some things like Survival of the Fittest, maybe. Uh, certain cards are playable. Uh, Gauntlet of Might, as we said, they're definitely playable and good cards, but those are not the ones people are talking about when they want to get rid of the reserve list. So please tell me down below in the comment section, where do you think that Wizards could functionally print them and it wouldn't cause massive disaster? To the people who don't want the reserve list gone, I definitely understand the discussion, and they say because you know cards will drop in value if you get rid of the re the the reprint. If you start reprinting and get rid of the reserve list, cards will drop in value. I'll lose all my stuff. Okay, fine. Let's let's actually take a look. Here's a small card. It's a good card, but a small card compared to many others. Birds of Paradise from Alpha is sitting at about a thousand dollars. Yeah, sure, you can get it for a little less, maybe, but thousand dollars. It's been reprinted way too many times. I don't know, at least eight times, I would think. Maybe ten, twelve, I don't know, a lot of times. Every single other reprint edition is five to eight, ten dollars. Sure. Has Alpha dipped with a dozen reprints? Has uh, Beta dipped in a dozen reprints? No. If anything, it's probably uh, maybe a little bit but not dramatically by any means has it dipped. If you want to get an Alpha Bird's Paradise, doesn't matter how many times Wizards reprinted it, it's just because of how rare it is. It's going to be hard to get. Same thing I would say for things like Wrath of God, no different. If you look at every edition, besides for the foil 7th edition, ignore that one, but just about everything else, you look at it, it's been reprinted a bunch of times, but if you look at Alpha, it's uh, or you look at Beta, it's insanely expensive. And these are not cards that are like the Power 9. So personally, I think if they managed to reprint them, I don't think it would hurt the collectors who have the originals by any means. If anything, I think it would make them more expensive because more people would be able to get into the formats. And so the collector side of things would open up. People would want the originals. You look at any time they reprint anything, the originals 90 plus percent of the time have a higher value over time. 
So that's my perspective on the two sides of the discussion. For me, I don't really have a preference either way. I think the result is fine the way it is. I don't. I think it's good for collectors, for people like me who've invested in dual lands and such, that there's a benefit to it. But I have no particular preference one way or the other. I'm just that's my analysis of the two sides of the equation and my two and my questions to the two sides. For the people who have the collection, then you're not going to suffer from the uh, reprint. People who want it gone, where would you print them? Let me know what you think down below. I know this is a very complicated topic. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Let me know them down below. And you can definitely check out, if you haven't heard of the reserve list and such, you can read the article. I'll put it in the description. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And as always, Rocks and Box and 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.